Welcome to another episode of 5 Games 5 Minutes from www.aconelectron.co.uk. Storm Cycle is a little arcade adventure from Atlantis in which you must collect five light reflecting dials and return them to your house on the edge of the forest. The game runs in mode 5 and it's very fast. In fact, it's so fast that you often find yourself running headlong into baddies or pits of fire before you've even clocked that they're there. A feature of Storm Cycle is that the baddies follow you from room to room, so just running away from them isn't going to help. I'm not too sure about the expanding and retracting sausage as a weapon either. Anyway, this game is not difficult in that you can easily find all of the diodes. The problem with it really is that survival is pretty much a matter of luck. Baddies are often unavoidable at some times and not others, but completely at random. The things that look like giant teddy bears are transporters. Standing in front of them and pressing P moves you around the different areas. Some of them take you to dead ends and need to be avoided completely. I'm not sure why I don't like this game, but I find that it doesn't hold my interest the way it should. Probably because it's all too easy to suddenly lose all of your energy just as you're about to take the last diode home and have to start from scratch. Diamond Mine 2 is one of my favourite games. You're in control of a vacuum pipeline which you must tool through caverns collecting diamonds. You mustn't double back on yourself and the pipeline has a fixed length. This means you need to retract it and approach some diamonds via your alternative cavern. Inside the caverns are a bunch of mutant eyeballs. If they collide with the expanded pipeline, you lose a life. However, if you run headlong into them, they immediately disappear. Immediately disappear, but only for about a minute. The game requires quite a lot of concentration. If a mutant eyeball appears at the top of the screen whilst you're at the bottom, you must quickly retract the pipeline to deal with it. There's one more variable to deal with. Dymo, your assistant who merrily pumps the motor that powers the pipe. He only has a finite amount of energy, so you mustn't hang around. It's a simple idea executed perfectly, and it has that just one more go pull to it. I love it. Alright, this next offering isn't a game. It's a selection of games and demos from the late BBC PD library, called the Six Soft Collection. Bones is a demo that most Electron owners will have seen before. What exactly is going on is anyone's guess. Dancing skeletons doing their thing in glorious monochrome for two minutes or so. Bones 2 Dear Night is a continuation of the same, this time in colour, with three skeletons and a bit of machine code thrown in for good measure. Nutter is a little basic game, puts you in charge of Adolf Hitler headbutting falling bombs out of the sky. It's in black and white, and the gameplay isn't exactly demanding stuff, but it's a bit risque for all that, and it's nice to find some demo stuff that takes a bit of a risk with the subject matter. Yossa is apparently based on a North Eastern miniseries called The Boys from the Black Stuff, which was, regrettably, before my time. As such, I don't really get the references. As with Bones and Nutter, it's a black and white graphics fair. Only had time to get through four there, so we might be back for some more from Six Soft later in time. Tactic is a falling blocks game, which was destined to be released by Superior Aconsoft. It was completed, but didn't make it out of the office because the market for Electron games had dried up by that time. It's a game where fast reactions are a must. Pieces fall from the sky, and you must steer them left and right to create a number of combinations of the same style. So, for example, you may need to land three blocks next to each other, or five blocks in a cross shape. You need to try to keep some areas free for creation of the combinations, and try and steer other blocks somewhere they won't do much damage. The game contains a hundred levels, and has a code facility, meaning once you have completed them once, if you take a note of the code, you can come straight back to the game and pick up where you left off. The action is smooth, and the game itself is quite a challenge, even though it appears at first sight to be quite simplistic. The two-player option, however, is rather redundant. Night World Some people might think it's unfair to review a game that I can only get to screen 3 in, But to them I say, right, let's see you get any further. Ahem, so, the premise is. Well, well, exactly what is the premise? The instructions are less than helpful, droning on about how you'll turn into a gargoyle when the sun goes down. Well, whoopee, and what exactly do I do when I turn into a gargoyle? Ah, say the instructions, that's for you to work out. This is quite a psychedelic looking game. I'd go so far as to say there isn't a single other Acorn Electron game that looks anything like it. Colours, sounds and weirdness are here in abundance. Unfortunately, playability is lousy. 
Colliding with any enemy results in the game slowing down by a factor of 5. Not knowing what to do is disheartening. And finally, the inclusion of so many completely unexplained features leaves you despairing and quickly reaching for the brake key.